a religious pageant in which President Kennedy was Osiris, slain by his evil twin brother Seth, you know, according to the the myth of uh, the, the, the legend of Osiris, his twin brother killed him. So we have the President Kennedy Osiris in the coffin, meaning the limousine, and Brother Seth, J.D. Tippett, shooting him from the grassy knoll. At a time when there was a conjunction of Mars and Venus in the constellation Scorpio with the most evil star, Aldebaran, the fallen angel shining right over Dealey Plaza, even though it was daytime. That's where that's where it was in Scorpio. And according to um, Egyptian history, uh, Osiris was killed at the time when Mars was in Scorpio. And here you had a conjunction of of, Jupe, of uh, Mars and Venus in Scorpio on the day President Kennedy was assassinated. So it sounds like. You're very uh, well versed as well in occult symbolism, and you're probably Absolutely. you're probably very much aware also of the uh, symbolism of that NASA uses uh, that Hoagland has you know has touched on. Yeah. Um, I would be surprised if you, you you know this as well. And this actually gives you a leg up on predicting uh, events in the future of our country and and possibly the world. Um, and I want, I would like you if you would go in that direction. And also, I want you to wrap in um, Dulce and Paperclip, uh, if you would, okay. into because this is is some areas that that do fall under this huge topic. Yes. Well, first of all, Richard Hoagland and I are great friends. I would say we're brothers. We met in 1993 uh, through my cousin. Who, who had been in contact with with Richard, and Richard was living in Hoboken, New Jersey, right across the river from where I live in Manhattan. So we met, and basically Richard had half the coin and I had the other half. And we sat and we brainstormed and we talked for four or five hours, and it was incredible because here he had been he had been studying the NASA angle, and I had been coming from the JFK. Uh, exclusively the JFK assassination and we sit down we start talking and all of this information started to gel and he had uh, the numerology and the the, the symbolism uh, of the numbers oh the numbers let me just explain to you on this topic. November 22nd 1963 an incredibly significant day why because 656 years to the date was the date that the Templars had been betrayed by the French, the King of France, and the papacy. They had been condemned to death, and November 22nd, 1307, was the day that Jacques de Molay and the Templars were burned at the stake, and he pronounced revenge would come upon them, upon, upon the crown. Now, 656 is just a little shy of that that's, that really evil number, you know, the 666. But when you look at the numerology of 11, 22, 1963, you add them up, they add up to 10. So that 10 supplies the missing 10, the missing decade for, to make that date uh, equal to, six, to 666. And, uh, oh, wow. You Fascinating. Think? Yeah. yeah it, it's, really, it's really arcane. Another it thing, is. another it is. thing, this event uh, was also followed, uh, 1307 uh, was a year of uh, peasants' revolt, and the peasants' revolt in England sought to establish, to displace the king and to establish this ideal society, which was called dot, 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 the Great Society. So in comes Lyndon Johnson after Kennedy's eliminated and put him in the White House. And what's he going to set up? The Great Society. And the significance <laughs> of this is this was dealing with Watt Tyler's revolt and Watt Tyler's uh, troops um, rampaged through the countryside, uh, terrorizing the country. But they had a really special uniform. They wore white robes with white pointed woolen hats. 
That was the first time the livery of the Ku Klux Klan was seen in history. Watt Tyler's revolt to set up the Great Society. Incredible. Oh, I know so much. I know so much about this. The assassination um, of Martin let me Luther ask you, King is tied in I with this. I have to ask you if, uh, if you know Peter Lavenda. No, I'm afraid I do not know him. Okay, uh, because he, he is uh, a researcher on the East Coast, and we've interviewed him, and he is, he is, you guys are like brothers, basically. I mean, he's right with you in following these incredible details out to their nth degree. Um, he's Glad something of a specialist that. in terms Glad of... Glad to hear that, you know. We're all brothers yeah. in brotherhood of truth. If, if you are looking for the truth and you're successful... We are going to come to, to, to the, the meeting of the minds and say, hey, brother, we both got here. How did you get here? Oh, I followed this one, and you followed that one, but we're here in the truth, you know? That's right. Well, he follows, like, he follows. Did you say the, his name uh, is Lavenda? Peter Lavenda. He, he's written uh, several I've books. I've heard his name. I've read his name, but I don't know him. And, uh, well, he's we'll in, he's in, Man, in the occult, the Manson murders, uh, the mind control, and... And it goes from there. It's really, really fascinating the way he follows out uh, these various threads. If I may touch uh, on the subject of mind control. Yeah. Uh, you know, it has a generically uh, bad reputation. But I can tell you that when the paperclip scientists, you asked me to get into paperclip, so let's use this as, as the vehicle. Okay, and let me just say that we've, we've got three minutes until we are going to have a break. There will be okay. a four-minute break, and then we will we'll go we'll continue on the other side of the hour, but go right ahead. Okay. Mind control has been practiced um, for many <laughs> thousands of years. The, the Nazis became very adept at it, as well as the communist Stalinist Russia. Uh, it's, it's just diabolical elements of mind control. But I'll, I have to say this, in three minutes, when mind control uh, technology came to the United States through the Nazi scientists, there was a group in the Office of Naval Intelligence who objected to it. And that group took uh, the lead in basically a counter intelligence program to MKUltra mind control, where they were... Uh, engineering Manchurian candidates, you might say that the Office of Naval Intelligence took it upon itself to engineer anti-Manchurian candidates who would be able to ferret these creatures out and expose them. And I became part wow. of the program there. It unwittingly, oh. I volunteered for something called artificial intelligence. And it basically engineered a brain that seeks truth. And if I don't get it, I get sick. Very much like um, with uh, Clockwork Orange. If I if I lie or if I am deceived, I have a physical reaction of illness. Well, so actually, I refrain, I refrain uh, from lying, and I definitely do not like to be lied to, because my soul erupts and I can sense it. You know. Yeah. Well, I think that, but that's a natural. Uh, I think that that would be a natural uh, human instinct. Uh, that true. sort of uh, engineered out of uh, most people at this point. You but, just said it. You said my exactly. We have been conditioned to suppress that instinct yes, and to absolutely. not believe our own reason or our own senses. And uh, we have to get back to, to believing in ourselves. That's my message. Believe in your own senses and your own perception. You don't need anybody to validate your perceptions. Wonderful. Uh, well, I mean, it's lovely to hear you say that and uh, and to to actually look at it the way you do and, and, and get that, you know, publicly, because, yeah, I don't think you speak out that often. And uh, and obviously your the amount of knowledge you have is really amazing. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy that you came on the show today. Uh, we are going to go to break 